Hello and welcome to lecture number 5 of this course. Today we will be discussing about the rest string functions which are present in Java. We have already discussed the first set in lecture number 4. Today we will be discussing the next slide. Alright, so let's start today's class. Okay, we have gone through this in lecture number 4. I hope you have gone through those functions and tried it out on your Java compiler. Okay, so today we will be discussing about these functions. The first one is is empty. It checks whether a string is empty or not. Now, what is an empty string? This is an empty string. Nothing is present. So, if it is an empty string, it will return an boolean value. True or false? It is an empty string. Yes. So, it will return true. But if, suppose the string was like this. Hello. This is not an empty string. So, here in this case, it will return false. Alright. So, let's try it on our window. Okay, so I'm continuing it on lecture 4 because the things are related and let me remove all those stuffs. Okay, so s dot is empty. So is s an empty string? No, S is not an empty string. It is contain something. It is contain a value hello. So it will return false. But if we make this string empty, suppose S4. And if we try to use this function, is empty function on the string S4. So what will the output is in this case? Okay, I've made a mistake. This will be an empty string like this. S4. S4 dot is empty. Yes, S4 is an empty string. So the output over here will be true. Alright, so the first output will be false and the second will be true. Let's try it. Yes, the first output is false and the second output is true. Alright, so is empty function is very easy. I don't think I need to spend more time. Last index of. This is very important. This is very close to what we discussed in the index of function. The index of function was returning the position of the character. The first found position. Suppose I have a string s equal to hello. Now if I try to do s dot index of l, it will return me what? 0, 1, 2. Let me write it clearly. Hello. Just a minute. Let me erase it. Suppose I have this string hello. So what are the index positions? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The s dot index of l, it will return me what? It will give me 2 because l is first found on the position 2 but if i do s dot last index of l in this case it will return me what it will return me 3 because it will start checking from backwards and the first time it will get the character l it will return me that position so last index of so what is the last position where l was found in the string it was found at position 3 isn't it so the output will be 3 this case in this case so let's try it on a window okay if i do s dot index of l then the output will be what and if i do s dot last index of and the output will be what here the first position s dot index of l the first occurrence of l is on the position 2 0 1 2 so the output will be 2 over here and the last position of l 0 1 2 3 the last position where l is found in the string is 3 so the output here will be 3 let's try to compile it and run it Here, the outputs are 2 and 3. Alright, so I hope last index of and index of functions are clear to you now. Index of returns the position of the character checking from the beginning. And last index of returns the position of the character checking from the end of the string or checking backwards. Alright, so next is length function. This is very easy. This just returns the length of the string. What is the length of the string over here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, if we do s dot length, the output will be what? The output will be 5. 
the output will be 5. Make sure that length is always 5, but the numbering will be go from or indexing will go from 0 to 4. Alright, so let's try it on a window again. Let's make it var and let's try to print the length of these two strings s dot length and s2 dot length here what will be the output s dot length there are five characters one two three four five so the output will be five over here and in what there are only three characters so the length is three all right output will be five and then three let's try to compile it and run it So the outputs are 5 and 3. The first output is 5 and next is 3. So length function is very easy. It just returns the length of the specified string. Now let's move on to replace function. This is also, I won't say it is not important, but we don't use it much in case of ICC exams or ICC programs. And it is recommended not to use, but let's learn it. It returns a string, it searches for a string for a specified value and returns a new string where the specified values are replaced. The return type over here is a string. Uh, if I go on the window and explain, then it will be easier. Or let me explain over it here only. Suppose I have this string s equal to hello. And if I do s dot replace, what? First I need to give what I will replace. I will replace suppose e. I am replacing e with suppose i. So, what will be the output? The output will be hello, H-I-L-L-O. Why? Because this character E over here is getting replaced by the character I over here. Alright, so let's try it on our window. And what is the output? The output is also a string. Suppose I am using S dot replace S dot replace E comma i and here i am using s2 dot replace suppose r with a w so what will be the output over here the output will be hello because the character e is getting replaced with the character i and here the character R is getting replaced with the character W. So the output over here will be wow. Alright. So let's try to compile it and run it. Outputs are two strings, isn't it? The return type is a string over here. Let's check whether those are correct or not. See, hello and wow. Here in hello, the E was replaced with I and here in word, the R was replaced with a W. So this is how the replace function works. In replace function, we give two uh, we give two parameters or we pass two values the first one is the string which is to be replaced or the string which we want to remove from our string from our original string and the second one will be the string or the character which we want to put our in, we, we, which we want to put in our new string isn't it in place of the one which we have just removed so replace always takes two parameters the first original string which or original character which is to be replaced and the new character which is to be put in that position Next, we have a split function. I will not discuss this now, but it is very important. But we will discuss this when we have covered arrays because it splits a string into an array of substrings. Now, what is an array and how the string array works? The return type is a string array. So, how this thing works, you won't be able to understand now. I will discuss this particular function we will, when we will have covered array. All right. Now, let's move on to the next function starts with. This is very easy and very similar to the one which you have done already ends with function. We have already discussed on last lecture. So starts with x whether a string starts with a particular set of characters or not. So if I do s dot starts with s dot starts with if I put it h e l over here what will be the output? And if I do the same thing, but instead of S, I am putting a word here S2. If I do, if I do S2 dot starts with, what will be the output over here? S is the string hello. It is starting with those characters H E L. So the output will be true over here. But S2 is the string word. 
there is no connection with HEL. So S2 is not starting with the characters HEL. So the output will be false over here. So the first output will be true and the second one will be false. All right, let's try to compile it and run it. The first output is true and the second one is false. That's what we have discussed. Yeah, true and false. So let's move on to our next character S dot substring. This is a very important function and we need to understand it properly. All right, and this will be very useful too. Uh, remember that the return type is a string. Now, how does this function works? Let's discuss this over here. Suppose I have this s equal to hello and I am doing s dot substring s dot substring 2 comma 4. Now, what is this 2 comma 4? Those must be indexes, right? So, what were the indexes over here? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Those were the indexes. Now, if I do s dot substring 2 comma 4, this 2 or the first value which we are passing over here is the starting value means from which the string will be created. The string will be created from this value. What is the value over here? L and the second one is the ending value. Uh, now you think now you must be thinking that the string is ending at what fourth position O. So the string will be L L O. The string will be L L O. But no, this is not the output. S dot substring we are passing two values. The first uh, starting position and the ending position but in java the ending position or the ending value is taken as one less that means if we have passed four over here we will take the values two and three so the output will be two and three or l and l the output will be l l all right now let's try it with another one suppose i have a string s equal to hello just a minute Suppose I have this string hello world. Now, what are the positions? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is a space, so it will be treated as the fifth position 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, if I do s dot substring s dot substring 2, comma 9, what will be the output? It will start from 2, so it will start from L. It will start from L and it will go up to 8 it will go up to 8 it will start from 2 and it will go up to 8 it won't take the ninth character or l so it will only print llo space word but llo space word this will be the output this will be the output w will be capital so let's write on our window this is how the uh, substring function works and it is very important also uh, first string is hello and let's make another string hello world Let's make it hello world. Okay, so if I do is dot substring two comma five, what will be the output? And if I do s2 dot substring 2 comma 9, then what will be the output? 2 comma 9. I discussed it just now. In case of 2 comma 5, okay. In case of 2 comma 5, oh sorry, we have done 2 comma 4. In case of 2 comma 4, the output will be LL. It will be only taking 2 and the starting over here is 2 and the ending over here is 4. So it will only be take 2 and 3. So the output will be LL. And in case of this one, uh, s dot substring 2, 9, the output will be LLO space word. So let's do it. Here it was 2, 4. And here it was 2, 9. The output over here will be LL only. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it will take 2 and 3, these two. And over here the output will be LLO space word why because 2 is 0 1 2 this one is 2 and 3 4 this space is 5 w is 6 o is 7 r is 8 l is 9 so it will not go up to 9 it will go up to 8 so it will print up to r s dot substring 2 comma 9 will give us r so the output will be ll and llo space word let's try to compile it and run it check the output are ll in first case and in second case llo space word 
all right now if you think that i want to put or i want to use it like this i am creating a new string s3 and here i am putting the value s2 dot substring 2 comma 9 so s2 is the whole string and string is a function it is returning the value llo space var so this string llo space var will be stored within the string s3 so if i do system dot dot printl and s3 then the same output will be given the same output will be given isn't it because s2 dot substring 2 comma 9 is giving us the output llo space var and that output i am putting onto the string s3 so if i print it again nothing will change the same output let's try it see again the same output ll and nlo llo space var here i was directly printing it and here llo underscore var i am print uh, i am storing it into a variable s3 i am storing it into this variable s3 and then i am printing that variable s3 isn't it so i hope substring function is clear now and this is very important again next we have care array i won't discuss it now because it converts the string into a new character array uh, at first i will discuss the array in future lectures then we will go through this function next is two lowercase and two uppercase i will discuss this function simultaneously because this is a very easy suppose i have this string h e l l o if i use the two uppercase function it will be converted to h e l l o all the characters will be converted to capital letter and suppose uh, there was something like h e capital l capital l o then I, then if i use uh, two uppercase then also it will be converted to the same same output capital H capital E capital L capital L O so to uppercase converts the string to uppercase characters and to lowercase converts the string to lowercase characters and the return types of string okay not one thing that you need to remember the return type of each and every function that is very very important all right so let's go to our window and suppose I have this small h and let's make this h e l capital l capital o capital o w o r capital l capital d now if i use s dot to upper case to upper case and if i use s two dot to lower case what will be the output in these two cases into uppercase we are converting each and every character to uppercase character so the output will be h e l l o and in lowercase we are converting each and every character of the string to small letters so the output will be h e l l o w o r l d like this isn't it this these two functions are very easy and just let compile it and run it here h e l l o all the letters of the string are in capital and here all the letters of the string all the characters of the string are in lowercase or small letter so this was about the two lowercase and two uppercase function next we have two string two string is also a function which i won't discuss now because it returns the value of a string object now what is a string object what are objects and classes i told you those are part of the oops discussion object oriented programming so at first i need to cover what are objects and classes what are string objects then only how to create string objects then only i can show the two string function at first we will be uh, making the string objects and then we will converting the string object into a string variable so i need to discuss that later because we have not covered object yet next the last two functions stream and value of this stream function is very easy uh, trim function does what suppose we have a string like this suppose we have this string space 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 then again suppose two spaces if i use s dot trim s dot trim what will be the output what will be the output tell me and if i use the same thing on s2 what will be the output if i use the same thing on s2 what will be the output trim does what trim removes the white space characters or the space blank characters or blank spaces from the beginning and ending of the string so it does what it removes the white characters white space characters or blank characters space characters from the beginning and ending of the string so the output will be just hello all the white spaces are removed and 
extruded stream there are no white space on the beginning and ending of the stream so the same thing will be the output the output will be the same thing okay so for your better understanding if i do another print statement system dot out dot print ln without the trim function then it will be better for you to understand then you will understand that how the space characters are getting printed because we have not used the trim function over here we are using the trim function over here so here all the beginning and ending characters will be removed so the only output will be hello and s2 dot stream since there are no beginning and ending spaces so the output will be same thing hello world all right let's try to compile it and run it see in the first case there are so many spaces on the beginning of the string and ending of the string there are also spaces but it won't be visible to you see it won't be visible to you since this is a white screen uh, when we are using the s dot trim function the beginning spaces and the ending spaces are removed the beginning and the ending spaces are removed in this output and s2 well, there were no spaces only in the string so there is nothing to remove but we have just used trim function to make you understand how the trim function works so trim function is used to remove the beginning and ending white space characters that is the function of the trim function and the last function uh, value of okay uh, let me tell you one thing those are these are not the ending of the string functions there are many more string functions available uh, inbuilt string functions available in java but uh, those are not required for icc also and for other purposes also if you are preparing for interviews also those uh, functions are not much used now if you are developing something you are developing a app or if you are doing some back end works then that may be useful uh, you can uh, search it on net but the most used functions i have noted down over here and uh, you need to study all of this for your icc purpose and interview purposes also all right so la last one is value of what uh, is this function and how does it how does this work it returns the string representation of the specified value and the output will be a string that means what suppose we have an int character uh, uh, sorry an int variable 20 suppose int a equal to 20 now i need to convert this to string 20 for that purpose we will be using value of how let's do it on our window just a minute yeah so suppose i have int a equal to 20 now uh, string a to string i'm using like this because i'm converting the int variable a to a string so i have named it like this a to string now what we will do we will use value of function we will use value of function value of what value of the character value of the variable a so a is an int value int value 30 we are converting that to a string but you can see that here uh, it's showing an error why because we need to mention that we are converting into what we are converting it into a string so we need to mention string dot value of a so string is the class and we are using the value of function from the string class value of function or method from the string class and we are passing the variable a over here a contains the int value 30 so here when we will print a to string this variable it will print us the value 30 only but that 30 will be what that 30 will be a string and if we just print system dot dot print ln a that it will also give us 30 because, but that 30 will be an integer isn't it so let's do that let me show you on the screen system dot out dot print ln if i do just a it will also give us 30 but that 30 will be an integer and if we do a to string that will be an string value that will be a string let's try to compile it and run it okay what's the error over here a to string oh sorry s yes, is small all right see in both the cases the output is 30 but uh, you might be wondering how we will distinguish this is an int and this is a string there is also a trick in that let's try to do in the first class i told you that if we use the plus operator if we use the plus operator and the first and there are two integers so it will be operated as an arithmetic operator the plus operator will work as an arithmetic operator 30 plus 10 will be 4 but if we try to do string of 30 
the 30 is a string plus 10. In this case, the output won't be 40. Here, the plus operator will work as a what concatenation operator. So, 30 is a string that will be printed, and along with that, the 10 will also be converted to a string and will be concatenated to this 30. So, the output will be 3010. I think it is clear now. Uh, because 30 was a integer value, so when we are using the plus operator, that is working as an arithmetic operator. So 30 and 10 is getting added and the output is 40. And here, a2 string, sorry, this thing will be written over here. Here, 30 is a string, a2 string because we are converting it into a string. We are using the value of function and we are converting the int value a into a string. And we are storing it into a2 string variable. So here a2 string is containing the string 30. When we are using the plus operator over here, whenever the plus operator finds a string along with it, so it works as a concatenation operator. So 30 is a string that is getting concatenated to 10. 10 is also converted into a string and that is getting printed. It won't work 30 plus 10 equal to 40. All right. So if we do system dot outdoor print a plus 10, and if we do a2 string plus 10, then the defense will be clear to you. Here the output will be 40, this thing. And here the output will be 30, 10. All right. So let's try to compile it and run it. See, here the output will be 40 and here the output is 30, 10. That's what we have discussed in these two print statements. So this was what about the value of function. I hope these functions are clear to you now. Go through these functions very, very carefully. These are very important for your ICC examination and interview purpose also. So I've discussed these special cases just now. Uh, since, uh, 10 plus 20, both are INT values, isn't it? Both are INT values, so 10 plus 20, 30 will be evaluated. Here, 10 and 20, both are strings. So this is working as a concatenation operator. So 10 and 20 will be concatenated to each other and that will be the output. Here, 10 is a string, but 20 is a INT value, but 10, plus here plus is getting a 10 string plus is getting a string so this plus works as a concatenation operator so 10 and 20 20 is also getting converted to a string this int value is also getting converted to a string and that will be concatenated so 10 20 will be the output all right so uh, this is what we were discussing and uh, let's move on to one last thing how to print special characters now you might be wondering how can we print double quotes because we know that strings are written like this string ends with a string starts with a double quote and it also ends with a double quote now if i want to put this ello within a double quote will i do it like this will i do it like this let's check what will be the error or what will happen see it's showing an error because it is getting converted as a string and this thing is getting converted as a string but this ell What's happening? ELL, it's not a string because here H is getting converted into a string and O is getting converted into a string. Now what we will do if I want to output like this, if I want to output like this, what I will do? What I will do? Sorry, just a minute. Yeah, what I will do to output this? This is not happening. So we need to use backspace over here. We need to use backspace over here. If I put to backspace, then the output will be like this. When we are using a backspace and a double quote, and then again we are using a backspace and double quote, these two double quotes won't be treated as the string beginning and string ending. It will be treated as two strings. It will be, sorry, it will be treated as two, back, uh, two double quotes. So the output will be like this. Let's try to print it. Okay. Yes. Compile it and let's run it. See, the output is hello, and we have used we have successfully used the double quotes. All right. So if we try to use these special characters, we need to use a backslash. We need to use a backslash. So that's what even written over here. If we try to use special characters, we need to use a backslash slash if you want to use a single quote we know that single quotes are used in characters but if we want to put that within a string then we will use a backslash if you want to use double quotes then also backslash and if you want to use these backslash then also at first we will write backslash and then another backslash suppose 
आई एम राइटिंग एस इक्वल टू एच ई एल बैक स्लैश बैक स्लैश एल ओ सो दट विल बी द आउटपुट द आउटपुट विल बी एच ई एल देन एल ओ वाई बिकॉज दिस फर्स्ट बैक स्लैश इज द इज द सिंटैक्स एंड दिस बैक स्लैश इज गेटिंग कन्वर्टेड इन टू लाइक दिस नाउ इफ आई डू एस इक्वल टू एच ई एल एंड देन अगेन एल देन अगेन अनदर दिस थिंग एंड ओ सो वट विल बी द आउटपुट द आउटपुट विल बी एच ई एल एल ओ इज इन दिट because before this l we are putting a single quote and after this l also we are putting a single quote so this l is getting convert uh, is getting placed between two single quotes so to put this single quotes we are using this backslash all right i hope it is clear now this is how we print special characters i think it is visible now yeah now let's move on to the last part of today's lecture quiz so in java which of the following statements regarding strings are true strings in java are mutable strings in java are immutable strings in java are created in a way that they are saved in heap memory strings are native data types java allows con string concatenation using the plus operator so i have not discussed these things yet what are mutable and immutable mutable and immutable mutable means which can be modified which can be changed which can be modified which can be changed and immutable means which cannot be modified and which cannot be changed the reverse thing immutable means cannot be modified and cannot be changed so remember that java strings are immutable whenever we have declared a string we cannot change the string anymore so java strings are immutable all right so this first one is false this second one is true strings in java are immutable next strings in java are created in such a way that they are saved in the heap memory when we will discuss about the garbage collection and memory management in java i will discuss that there are two spaces one is the heap memory and another is the stack memory uh, one is the stack memory and another is the heap memory now how does this work and uh, how does all those things express i will discuss later but as of now remember strings in java are created in such a way that they are saved in the heap memory this is also true strings and native data types no this is wrong i have already discussed about primitive and non primitive data types primitive data types were int short long byte char isn't it and non primitive data types i told you those were what strings objects arrays strings objects arrays so string is not a native or primitive data type string is a non primitive data type so this is also wrong and at the end java allows string concatenation using the plus operator i have shown you with very uh, many examples in the last few lectures yes this is true java allows string concatenation when we are using the plus operator it works as a concatenation operator so the correct answers are strings in java are immutable strings in java are created in such a way that they are stored in the heap memory and java allows the string concatenation using the plus operator so this was all about today's lecture i hope everything was clear if you have any doubt in last day's lecture and today's lecture please mention it in the comment section and uh, drop a like and share it with your friends also do uh, reuse in the mention in the comment section how is the course going on as of now and please share it with those who are not financially capable of paying tuition fees uh, because i am doing this lecture free of cost and if you have any problem mention me in the comment section or uh, use join my whatsapp community you can directly whatsapp or message me also all right so let's end today session thank you